Good afternoon, guys. We are now uh, going to discuss about the derivative of the power function for rational exponents. The function defined by f of x equals x to the r is called the power function. This is coming from uh, the calculus with analytic geometry or TCWAG by Lighthold. Hence, the derivative of the power function is r x to the r minus 1. Okay, example number one, suppose we are given f of x equals 5 times the cube root of x squared. So the first thing that we're going to do is transform the radical function to the power function. So you have, or the exponential. So you have 5x to the 2 third. All right, so we know that the index here becomes the denominator and the exponent of the radicand. No, or the exponent inside the radical becomes the numerator. So that is why you have two thirds. Okay, so the next thing that we're going to do is get the derivative of x to the two third while copying the constant five. So the derivative of this is two third x to the two third minus one is negative one third. Okay, so. Since uh, this one is negative, we will write it down in the denominator to make the exponent positive. Exponent one-third is now positive. All right, so we have 5 times 2. It's 10. Then copy the denominator 3. And then transform that power function or exponential uh, form into radical form. So you have 10 over 3 times the cube root of x. And this becomes your final answer. Example number two. Suppose we are given the function, the square root of 5x cubed minus 3x squared plus 2. Again, transform it into this form. So you have 5x cubed minus 3x squared plus 2 to the 1 half because the index here is 2. Okay? And the exponent of the whole thing here is 1. Okay? So uh, the derivative of this is 1 half of the enclosed terms, copy, then 1 half minus 1 is negative 1 half, then the derivative of the, the enclosed terms. So again, we go back to the chain rule. All right, so the derivative of 5x cubed minus 3x squared plus 2 is 15x squared minus 6x. Then let us now um, write this down in the denominator to make the exponent negative 1 half equal to 1 half. So you have 15x squared minus 6x all over 2 times 5x cubed minus 3x squared plus 2 to the 1 half. And then take note that this is still factorable. So the common factor is 3x, no? So 15x squared divided by 3x is 5x and that negative 6x divided by 3x is 2. Okay? So since there is no possibility for cancellation, then let's transform this now to radical forms so you have 3 times 5x minus 2 divided by 2 times the square root of 5x cubed minus 3x squared plus 2 as your okay 2 times the square root as your final answer okay example number three suppose you are given the function g of x equals x to the fourth all over the cube root of 4x cubed minus 3 Again, let's transform this into this form. So you have g of x equals x to the fourth over the quantity of 4x cubed minus 3 raised to the exponent one third. And so, um, so that this would be simpler to solve, no? We are going to, I mean, transfer this to the numerator by changing the positive exponent to negative exponent so that you have negative one third. Okay, so this is now in the form of u times v, which is u dv plus v du. Okay, so your u is x to the fourth. Then the derivative of this is negative one-third of copy the enclosed terms. Then negative one-third, it's negative one-third minus one. That's negative one-third minus three over three which gives you negative four-thirds, okay? Then the derivative, chain rule again, of 4x cubed minus 3 is 12x squared. 
plus, copy this, and then the derivative of x to the fourth is 4x cubed. All right, so 12x squared times negative one third is 12 divided by three, so that's four, so that's negative four x, that's negative four x squared multiplied by x to the fourth is negative four x to the sixth. I hope you were able to follow again. 12x squared times negative one third is negative four x squared times x to the fourth is negative four x to the sixth. That means you you copy the common base and you add your, your exponents. Okay? So we have 4x cubed, then multiplied by 4x cubed minus 3 to the 1 third. Okay, there are two methods that I'm going to uh, uh, share in this video discussion in terms of uh, simplifying this answer. This is the derivative, but of course, we, we have to move on no? applying algebra so that we can have the simplified answer. Okay, so I would like to consider this as method one. So method one is I'm going to make this exponents positive by writing it down in the denominator. So we have this already. Okay, and so does with the other one. So the leftover in the numerator is, of course, this one and this one. All right, so we have the LCD now. All right, so the LCD is simply the highest. Uh, of course, you see that the binomials are the same, only that their exponents are different. So just look at or get the highest exponent. The highest exponent is 4 over 3, so that becomes the LCD. Divide this by itself is, of course, 1 times negative 4x to the 6 is negative 4x to the 6. Divide this by this. So you see that's when you divide exponential expressions no you simply copy the common base or of course divide exponential expressions with the same base copy the common base and subtract the exponent so that means 4 third minus 1 third is 3 over 3 which is equal to 1 so that in the numerator you have 4x squared multiplied by 4x cubed minus 3 to the power of 1 or to the exponent of 1 okay so we bring this down and then multiply 4x cubed times 4x cubed. That's 16x to the 6. And that 4 times negative 3, 4x cubed times negative 3 is negative 12x cubed. Okay? Since we see um, the same terms, so we simplify. We combine these terms so that we have negative 4 plus 16. All right? So that's 12x to the 6 minus copy 12x cubed. Okay? And so we see a common factor. The common factor is 12x cubed, the lowest exponent, because we have the same base. So 12x cubed is the common factor. And then 12x cubed divided by 12, I mean 12x to the 6 divided by 12x cubed is x cubed. And 12x cubed divided by itself is 1. So that you have um, the enclosed terms as x cubed minus 1 and copy your denominator so this becomes your final answer okay now let's proceed to another method method two so instead of doing that no instead of uh, doing away from the negative exponent we can still <laughs> sustain no <laughs> having the negative exponent so what we're going to do is we're going to get the common factor of this okay so negative 4x to the 6 and 4x cubed uh, based on negative and positive our common sign here is going to be negative because of course we know that the negative in a binomial should not uh, should, uh, doesn't look nice no so we take out the negative sign and then 4 and 4 and x to the 6 and x cubed so the lowest is 3 so that our common factor of those monomials is 4x cubed. Then how about the binomials? So since this is negative 4 thirds and this is negative 1 thirds, we, we know that when we get the a common factor uh, with those power functions or with those exponential expressions, we look into the lowest exponent. Now negative 4 thirds is lower than negative 1 third. And so that becomes the 
um, common factor so that you have uh, the binomial for x cubed minus 3 raised to the exponent negative 4 thirds. And so the leftover now is uh, negative 4x to the 6 divided by negative 4x cubed is x cubed. Then this one is canceled. And then this becomes, the plus here becomes minus already. And divide 4x cubed by 4x cubed, it's 1. And then again, when we divide, diba? so that's negative 1 third minus negative 4 thirds. So what happens there when you subtract those exponents? So negative 1 third subtracted from negative 4 thirds, that becomes negative 1 third plus 4 over 3, which is 3 over 3, which is 1. So that the leftover here is having an exponent of 1. The binomial for x cubed minus 3 raised to the exponent 1. Okay? So since that's 1, then you can directly multiply that also with this. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, so we have the negative of 4x cubed. We have negative 4x cubed. Negative times negative 3, you have positive 3. Then we can now... We can now combine. So x cubed minus 4x cubed is negative 3x cubed plus 3. And then, of course, there is a common factor of 3, right? So 3 is the common factor. So 3 times negative 4x cubed is positive. All right, let's take out the negative. Again, because it's binomial, and then the starting sign is negative. Or just like in real life, it's not good to be negative all the time, right? So to start your day with a negative vibe, okay? It's not good to start your day with a negative vibe. So negative 3 is taken out as a common factor. So negative 3 times negative 4x cubed is negative, I mean positive 12x cubed. So negative 3x cubed divided by negative 3 is positive x cubed. And positive 3 divided by negative 3 is negative 1. So let's compare. Okay, we have the same answers. Okay, let's have another example. This example is taken from the book of Lighthold, uh, the calculus with analytic geometry again. So basically our presentation here, video discussion is based upon that reference. All right, but of course, eh, I changed some problems there, all right? So those problems that I did not change, I we have to credit that to the author of the textbook, The Calculus with Analytic Geometry. Okay, so suppose we're given f of r equals the square root of 4 sine squared r plus 9 cosine squared r. So f of r is equal to this binomial now raised to the exponent of 1 half. Because that's 1. Okay, and that's 2. All right. So, let's start. 1 half. So, that's u to the n. Okay, so you have 1 half of 4 sine squared r plus 9 cosine squared r raised to the power of negative 1 half. Because that's 1 half minus 1. So, negative 1 half times the derivative here. So, you have 4. The derivative of sine 2r, okay, is 2 sine r so don't change sign yet no then that's the time you differentiate your sign it becomes cosine then copy r and the derivative of r is one plus okay copy nine then two is the exponent here so two times cosine r copy cosine r but this time let's differentiate the derivative of cosine is negative sine and copy r then the derivative of r is one okay so let's simplify this one, bring this down. So you have 4 times 2 is 8, sine r cos r, minus 9 times 2 is 18, sine r cos r. Well, that's minus because of the negative sign here times the positive sign here. Alright, so um, even if cos sine r is the first one here, I, I, choose, I chose this one to be the first. Because uh, I think by instinct, all right, uh, they are similar terms. And so since they are similar terms, then that's 8 minus 18 as negative 10 sine r cos r. 
And negative 10 is cancelled by 2, so you have negative 5 sine r cos r, and then copy your denominator, of course. Um, it's it's copying the denominator here. I hope uh, you, you, you know already why this happened, all right? Because it's negative 1 half, so to make that positive, we will write it down in the denominator okay so changing this exponential form now to radical form so we have the final answer negative 5 sine r cos r all over the square root of 4 sine squared r plus 9 cosine squared r okay thank you very much this is dr batukan saying mathematics is easy to learn when one learns with enthusiasm so this uh, video discussion is now getting uh, harder for some students but hopefully as long as you follow the rules so just like in real life if you follow the rules of the government the rules in the family then everything will go smoothly all right you will be uh, successful in answering problems related to this again thank you very much Mathematics is easy to learn when one learns with enthusiasm. Bye again!